Good morning. Welcome to SunUp. Sorghum is well established as a summer crop here in Oklahoma, but as with any crop, variety matters. That's why we recently attended a sorghum field day outside Blackwell. Well, Austin, we caught up with uh, grain sorghum specialist Rick Kokenauer to talk about grain sorghum today. And what kinds of things are you really trying to get those producers to focus in on? We're trying to get these, we put these trials in north central Oklahoma, and we're trying to evaluate maturity groups by planting early. Get them out so these guys will, uh, a lot of them want to go back to plant wheat in the fall on a site like this. So what we focus on is planting in the last two weeks of April. That's when we get, it's optimum for rainfall that we get during the year. We get things, and the reason we're looking at maturity groups is we try to get it matured before we get the heat of late July and August that we typically right. have. Right. And by planting early and looking at some different days to mid bloom, when we talk about maturity groups, we talk about days to mid bloom. Uh -huh. Typically, what we kind of recommend up here is 58 to 67 days to mid bloom. Hmm. So, what it allows us to do, this stuff is flowering generally around the 1st of July, so we're beating all the heat. We still got rain from June that we typically right. still get. Still got some moisture to get them up and get them so, mature. So, so yeah. we get it mature and then we get out and we're able to harvest in late August. This is today is what April or August 23rd. Right. We're going to say actually cut this trial today. It was planted April 26th, 27th, excuse me, and we're actually going to harvest this trial this afternoon. So is this kind of a, a shift in thinking in green sorghum? Yeah, yes. Uh, the last 10 years we've really shifted that the the timing uh, most guys have always wanted to plant late may early june which is still a good time sure sure but guys that want to try to get three crops in two years we've really focused i've spent most of my last 12 years focusing on this late april time frame and planting so guys can come in get it out get back and go back and plant wheat in the fall and then next summer they'll either plant a double crop sunflower sesame soybean something you know something else yeah so they can that. get that way they can get three crops in two years tell me how's the crop look this year really looks good uh, most of the early planted sorghum that was planted the last couple of weeks of april uh guys are going to have as good a sorghum as they've ever had i've actually cut the trial at tipton uh last thursday uh the, had four or five hybrids down there make 110 bushel per acre so we had some really good yields down there and it looks good all through the north, the western half of the state. I haven't really been over east and I, traditionally there's not a lot grown, but in, the, in this production area, you know, I-35 west, everything looks outstanding. In corn and soybeans, we talked about heat really pushing yep. the maturity of the crop. Have you seen that this year in sorghum? Yes, we uh, actually, the sorghum is driven by heat units until it gets to flowering and then all bets are off, then it kind of goes out the window. But with the, with the heat we've had, everything was probably two or three days earlier this year than what typically would be, because we you know, we got hot in May and June, and it just kind of speeded everything up. Just, you know, sorghum just like every other crop. One other thing that you guys are doing out here is you're looking at varieties. Yes, and this, varieties have really changed. Yes. And they're always changing. Yes, seed companies generally enter new hybrids every year. Uh, We've got some in here that's been here, been in here every year since I've been here. Uh -huh. But we, tr every year we probably get five to ten new hybrids that's entered every year. The seed companies want to evaluate them because they know I evaluate them all over the state, so they get to see how they perform all over the state. So we're constantly getting new hybrids in every year. So for a producer that wants to see what the seed companies offer new, they can come and look. We'll have it in our replicated trial here. Then we'll when we put our production reports out and see what kind of yield it was compared to something they've been traditionally growing. All right. Well, thanks, Rick. And I think uh, Austin Moore now has uh, an interview with Joe Armstrong about some of those new varieties coming out. Of course, whenever we talk about variety trials, one of the important things we want to talk about is herbicide resistance. It's something that's very exciting in the, in the industry right now. Here to tell us about a couple of those is Joe Armstrong. Joe, what have we got going on with sorghum here in terms of, of herbicide resistance? Well, we're doing a couple studies with ALS resistant grain sorghum and also ACCase resistant grain okay. sorghum. ACCase is the mode of action that, that all of our grass killer type herbicides belong to. And that's something a lot of producers are already using in broadleaf crops here in the state. Exactly. You know, guys are cleaning up uh, foxtails, volunteer mm -hmm. corn, all those things in, in their broadleaf crops. But this technology will give us the opportunity to use a grass killer product in a grass crop. So a very unique application. Very exciting. Of course, this looks like it's a few years out from, from actual use. Where are we actually at in the trials? Uh, we've got a couple years ago until they're commercially released. These trials here, we're just using inbred lines at this point. So more of a proof of concept in terms of the herbicide resistance. Mm -hmm. 
the, the actual commercial hybrids should be out in the next couple years. Okay, now you've got a few different things going on here as we look at the different trials. Kind of tell us what we're looking at here. Well, a lot of these treatments, uh, we've included a Sure 2. That, that'll be the grass product that's labeled over the top here right. uh, as a post-emergence treatment. And we're looking at it in combination with various herbicides to increase uh, broadleaf activity as well. Uh, one treatment that I think is kind of interesting down here mm -hmm. is uh, where we used Select Max, also okay. a grass control product that could be used in, in any broadleaf crop. But the thing to notice here, and we take, we've taken out all the grain sorghum. Yeah, it's all gone. And, and that's a very important thing for farmers to realize. First is, you can't just use any grass control product uh, right. as a post-emergence treatment in this grain sorghum. But what this will allow you to do is clean up any volunteer uh, AL, or ACC ACE resistant so grain sorghum. you're going to come in, say, with sunflowers after this, you want to make sure it's all gone. Yep, and, and that's going to be very important to prevent uh, the spread of, of resistant uh, crop plants that could become weeds in the future. Okay. Now let's talk about use. I mean, one of the things you want to make sure producers have the, the right mode of action. They know exactly what they want to do with it. What are we learning here from this research as far as the use of the product? Well, th that's the whole idea is, is to get that education process started. And so what we're learning here, um, just like we've learned, unfortunately, kind of through trial and error with, with our Roundup Ready crops, is that you have to use other herbicides in that production system. And so um, pre-emergence herbicides are, have always been important in grain sorghum, but I think they're going to be even more important now as we work in towards these post-emergence treatments so we can preserve this technology and have it for a long, long time. So I guess kind of the take home for producers, this is a process, this is part of a system, it's not a silver bullet, there's, there's no silver bullet. No, taking everything. no, you're gonna need uh, a well-rounded herbicide treatment, uh, spraying weeds when they're small, and, and rotating crops and herbicides throughout your entire uh, production system. All right, well, it's good information as always. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.